Good morning, good morning. This is Anthony Mittivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com and I want to talk this morning about how you can get the right number of stations in your memory palaces and you know a uh, Spider-Man salute this morning with great power comes great responsibility. I think that's a important message and just as a bit of housekeeping thank you to everyone who went and checked out my my review, book review, book report, let's call it, on Barbara Oakley's uh, Mind Shift. What a great book. What a beautiful book. Um, that was an interesting little slip there. I was going to say Barbara Oakley's Memory Palace, but uh, <laughs> that was because uh, that's called the Ugly Sister Effect. And uh, if you um, don't know about the Ugly Sister Effect, you can, of course, check out the uh, Beginner's Guide to Overcoming the Ugly Sister Effect on MagneticMemoryMethod.com. It's a, a really interesting thing that happens, and you're going to definitely want to get that solved if you get hung up by it, because no one's going to remove it from their life, but you're going to be able to deal with it once that you know what it is, you know a little bit about why it happens, and you know how to turn it into a memory asset rather than a memory problem. And uh, if you're hopping on this live call, let me know where in the world you are, what you're doing. I'm here in Brisbane in the Magnetic Memory Method headquarters, broadcasting from the kitchen for once. So, ooh, look at that. Somebody has a clean kitchen counter, which is good, right? Because these places are magnetic stations in a memory palace. And so the point of today's call, and again, let me know where in the world you are, and interact, engage, show that you're interested in this kind of material with your click buttons and stuff. Heather Mullen from Orlando, Florida. Okay, so here's the thing. Heather from Heather Mullen from uh, Orlando, Florida. So if I wanted to remember that, just think that this is a magnetic station in a memory palace. And, well, I know a guy named Alex Mullen, and uh, Heather's was a movie that was really interesting. So now I can see the actresses from Heather's beating up Alex Mullen, and now Orlando, Florida, well, uh, that's just like a location in space, so maybe I'll see Disney World here, right? And then I'll be like, Heather Mullen from Orlando, Florida, and, uh, oh, Disney, yeah. Um, so, that's, you know, basically one way to just instantly create some imagery, and then as I'm talking, I'll be thinking, in my mind, you know, I won't be visualizing it or anything like that, but I'll just be going back to it. Imagine this is at a party. I've just met Heather Mullen from Orlando, right? And in that party, which is taking place in an apartment like this one, uh, I just start to create some imagery in a part of the room, right? And there we go, boom. And so as I'm talking with other people, meeting other people, just five times at least go back to that and think, Okay, so what was the happening there? Oh, the girls from Heather's were beating up Alex Mullen, and uh, they were, oh, they, they were throwing Disney, like Space Mountain, the ride itself, they were smashing onto Alex Mullen, right? And then I can remember that. Now, hopefully, uh, I haven't made a, a, a total moron out of myself and I've gotten that correct, but uh, that's how it worked. Alan says, hi, Anthony, Alan in Melbourne here. Hope you've got some warm weather up there. Well, it's actually a little bit cold, but uh, uh, it's not too bad. So now we've got uh, Heather Mullen from Orlando, Florida, and then we can have Alan here in Melbourne, like in, in the uh, kitchen sink, actually standing in the kitchen sink. So, you know, and then beside that, I'm trying to like show here, there we would have um, the next person who shows up and says hello. And by the way, let me know who you are and where you are from. and. Uh, you know, we can stick your name right there on the uh, drying rack there for the for the uh, for the dishes. And this is how it works. So you can be at a party, and here's the whole point of this call: is if you want to make like some sort of calculation when you go into any new memory palace, what you can do is just use like the, the rule of threes. So Flyer Cow says, hello from Mexico, real name Julio Vergara. Oh, well, I hope I had some decent pronunciation there. Um, <laughs> really great that you're here, um, Julio. And uh, so Julio from Mexico, well, who do I know that, how can I get something like Julio? Well, first of all, 
you want to like cultivate the ability to not worry about whether there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. You want some sort of near misses sometimes if something comes up. So I can't think of anyone named Julio, but I can think of Coolio, and he's got an orange Julius, who, and it's like being smashed on there. So now, you know, Julio, Julio, you know, like whatever, something that works. And to get the idea of from Mexico, then, uh, uh, well, I'm just thinking of Breaking Bad comes to mind, Better Call Saul, all this kind of stuff. So that is starting to work. And so now I want to go back. And so there was Heather Mullen from Orlando and Alan in Melbourne. Alan, that's a bit of a cheat because you've shown up on so many of these calls and I really appreciate that. And uh, now we got Julio in Mexico. So, um, and, and oh, so Flyer Cow Julio says, for Mexico, a big hat or a mustache. <laughs> That works. I mean, whatever works for you is really, really great. And uh, so I appreciate you guys uh, putting uh, your names here and letting me know where you're from. And it's a good memory exercise. But if you go into a party, you can use the rule of threes to really help you. So you've got like flat surfaces, counters. It might not be a counter exactly like this one, but when you see a space like that, well, it's natural. There's a natural, well, not natural, but there's some kind of division between one, two, and three. David from Toronto, AKA the center of the universe. You know, David, when I lived in Toronto, I also thought it was the center of the universe. And uh, I really uh, I really sort of miss it there uh, sometimes, uh, not when it's cold, but uh, I uh, have found living in Brisbane that it didn't take long before Brisbane felt like the center of the universe. <laughs> David says, LOL, oh, well, still do. Okay, so now David, uh, here we have another counter. I've just been at the market, so forgive this bag here. What do we got at the market? Ooh, brain-friendly avocado. Sweet. Uh, homegrown here in, in uh, the near of Brisbane. So David, I'm going to see you just with my friend, Video Dave. And Video Dave, if you're on the call, uh, nice to see you. Uh, say hello. But uh, now, now that's there. And uh, so we got Julio from Mexico, Mexico uh, and then we have Alan in Melbourne, and then we have Heather Mullen in Orlando, Florida, right? And so how that, that works is just that fast, right? So learn English with Ali, Liverpool in the house. Much love to you, I appreciate you. Thank you for saying that, uh, Ali. So now, like, you know, I, can, I got another spot here, so we can have, oh, let's move this out of the way. We can have Ali, and actually, you know, if you really want to, if you get good at this stuff, right, then you've got four burners on a stove. Each of those could be a person. But don't overwhelm yourself if you're just beginning with this stuff. Just have one, one thing here. So it was Ali from Liverpool. I wasn't encoding at that time, but uh, I would want to encode or associate, make some magnetic associations. So I remember Ali G. You never see that? Uh, that the guy who makes funny videos back in the day. And uh, Liverpool, he's like, he's with um, uh, Hannibal Lecter, eating Hannibal Lecter's uh, stuff. Or think of the Beatles from Liverpool. Okay, so that's easier, right? But you know, you gotta go with what comes with your mind. Like uh, Julio from Mexico, I didn't really come up with a good one, so I came up with Julio with, uh, what was it, Orange Julius smashing that down and I was thinking about Breaking Bad and so forth. Alan is a bit of a cheat because, uh, oh, but I can work on Havelock. Is that right? Okay, so Anthony, if you have a set of me vocabulary in a memory palace under A, you want to add new A words, how do you do it? Oh, well, good question. Um, uh, but let me just catch up with, uh, was it Heather Mullen from Orlando, Florida? Whatever, I think you get the point. The point is, is that if you are in a real life situation, like I am right now, and you're in a party, that's the way I would do it. And I would try to find natural divisions in space and, uh, and then just think, like this counter, it's just, it's not a natural division, but if you just use the rule of threes, it doesn't overwhelm, overwhelm you. One, two, and then three. So it's easy, right? And you just have the rule of threes all over the place. So that's part of the magnetic memory method station calculator. There are other ones. I make, I, I'm editing now a video that's like proper in the studio and stuff. So uh, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to this channel, hit subscribe. If you're on the call right now, look at this, I got, I got seven people and one like. What is going on here? Come on, let me know that you're enjoying this and uh, hit those like buttons. I don't really care if you like this <laughs> or not, but yeah, thank you, good. But uh, it helps uh, tr trigger Google that people care about this kind of education. So leaving comments and hitting the like button and all that sort of stuff helps more people find these 
discussions, these trainings, and if you like me doing it, then I will do it. The great Tahir says, hi, what is this? This is memory training. If you don't know how to make a memory palace, go to magneticmemorymethod.com. Shubas in Panama, just tuned in, just in time. Yeah, because this may or may not be a short one. As soon as April opens the door, this is uh, off. And the great Tahir asks, can we remember more? Yes, absolutely. And uh, Tahir says, my memory, it's terrible. Tahir, your memory's not terrible, stop saying that. You gotta first say, my memory is the most beautiful thing that I have because I live in the present moment and the present moment is memory and memory is the present moment. I honor, I cherish, I love my memory. I'm gonna do everything that it takes to make it the most beautiful place to live in the world. Yes, the great to hear writes, my memory, beautiful. It is beautiful. It's the most beautiful memory in the world because it's yours. It's yours. Love it and cherish it. Come to MagneticMemoryMethod.com. I got so much training, so much positive messages that you can take and absorb. And you know, there's some tough love there too, because I just say, like, say it like it is. Show up to the art of memory and the art of memory will serve you. But if you don't show up to serve it, um, Shubas asks, well, if you don't show up to serve it, then it's not going to serve you, basically. Um, Shubas asks, are there any tips for verb conjugations? Alan is asking about adding more words to a memory palace that's tapped out. Um, well, we can really tackle uh, them both. So here's the thing. When it comes to adding new words to a memory palace that's tapped out, a lot of people, what they want to know is, should I insert stations in between stations? So if Alan is here in the sink, sorry to put you in the sink, Alan, but that's just the natural rule of threes, but <laughs> uh, Alan in Melbourne in the sink, and then was it Heather Mullen in Orlando, Florida, here uh, in the, uh, the corner there, would I put a station in between these two stations? And the answer is very rarely, because if I'm doing the great to hear says, nice website, sir. Thank you for visiting magneticmemorymethod.com. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to that free course. You're gonna find out just how beautiful your memory is. Uh, so learn English with Ali. Okay, thank you. And uh, I will remember you. Yes, because Ali from Liverpool, you're right here on the burner with Hannibal Lecter eating your liver. <laughs> so you see, like, I didn't even rehearse that, right? I didn't go back and think about it again, but because the image was sufficiently strong enough, it was able to come back to me. So um, it's, uh, it's useful that way. Back to the station, inserting stations between stations. I wouldn't do it. And, uh, and the reason why is because it's just not worth the hassle when you can just go and create another A memory palace. So you got A memory palace one, you got A memory palace two, you got A memory palace three. And the question that you want to ask yourself, and it's the most important question is, have I, have I really memorized everything in version one? Can I rattle it off? Can I be like, okay, so there was a bajo, and then there was abuela, and then abacar, and like, you know, if you were going through that, do you really know what they all mean? Can you use them all in a sentence? If you can, well then experiment. Maybe you will be the kind of person who likes to put stations between stations to max them out. I'm not, and I don't see really the, the value in doing it for my style. But everybody's gonna develop a mnemonic style, and it'll get more and more mnemonic, or magnetic and mnemonic, mnemonically magnetic, the, uh, the more that you do it and the more that you experiment and practice. But I just go and create a new memory palace. It's not that difficult. Do you know that uh, I've never used this kitchen before? But uh, I got Hel uh, sorry, uh, Heather Mullen from, that was one of those ugly sister effects. <laughs> Heather Mullen from Orlando, Florida. Alan Havelock in uh, Melbourne. Julio in Mexico. It was David in Toronto. And then we had uh, Ali in Liverpool, right? So now I've, I've, I'm breaking this kitchen in into a memory palace. And uh, then if I want to remember those names for the rest of my life, for example, then I'm gonna throughout the day five times revisit the kitchen and uh, there's some other things that I'll play around with. If I wanted to then, I don't know, go to the market, I met two guys today named Peter, so that was kind of like a freebie because you meet one Peter and you just haven't been a fist fight with the next one, and then whatever, right? So I could like insert them in between the stations if I wanted, I probably won't because they already got their own memory palaces. So I hope that answers that question, um, Alan, uh, because it's, it's uh, I think the fastest path 
is to A, ensure that you've actually memorized what you've got in the memory palace. Is it really tapped out? Have you used it to its fullest potential? And then think too, could you compound somehow um, onto those existing stations? So if you had a bunch of words in an A palace, then, uh, uh, you know, I'm thinking of um, uh, a German one, like Sich Allen, and uh, then there was App Artisch and App Beitzmittel and so forth in German, in my A Mary Palace for German, my first one. Then I could think, okay, so App Beitzmittel, uh, I could maybe, maybe I could add some things to that. So add more A words, and maybe there's a way to use the rule of threes if I wanted to insert new stations like we've been talking about in this video. Um, does that make sense? I, I, I hope that's answering your question and giving you some, some good things. In terms of verb conjugations, this is covered in all of the books, and it's really simple. You've just got to make a memory palace and have the stations let you remember the conjugations. So if you had a hospital, First of all, it's a calculation, right? Every, everything has to do with some sort of calculation, knowing the volume of the information that you want to make. And then uh, Alan says, thanks, Anthony, most helpful. Well, thank you very much, Alan, for being here, and thank you for the great question. Um, so you've got a number of tenses. Each language, well, not every, not every language has its different uh, level uh, or different amount of uh, tenses that it'll, it'll use. But you know, some will have nine, some will have more or less. It really depends. And if you know how many there are, well, then you have a sense of how many like levels you might need in a memory palace. And then you'll take any individual word, and then you'll have like a regular and irregular uh, divisions often. And so imagine you got two memory palaces, and each has a number of levels for preterium, and you know, all the all the different kinds of tenses that are named in that particular language or worked with in that language. You might want to put some priority on the ones that are actually used the most in the, the, the way that you're going to be using the language as a first line of attack. So there's some fancy ones in German, for example, that are just are not. The, the, the return on investment in drilling them down is not as valuable as other ones, uh, likewise in, in lots of languages. So you've got to think about that. What, what's worth your focus right now relative to your hopefully carefully defined fluency goals in that you haven't like overwhelmed yourself with some totally unreachable, I want to speak every word in the language, right? No, because fluency doesn't exist. I'm not even fluent in English. I've been speaking it for a long time. Uh, heck, it took me years just to be able to speak English half well, like by the time I was seven, I still was barely fluent, and now I'm 40 and I can hardly still speak English. So this idea of fluency, it's got to go. You just got to think about what is it that I want to do in a language? What are the milestones that it's going to take to get there? And then just start knocking them off. And then before you know it, you won't even be thinking about fluency because you'll just be speaking the language. And when you can't think of what it is that you need to say, you'll have alternatives to get there. And you'll just be able to be able to straight up ask, you know? Uh, what is it, how do I say this in that language, right? And you'll be able to use other words in the language to ask you what is a better way to say what you're trying to express. And then you'll learn from there. But uh, the conjugations, so you, you understand a little bit about how grammar works, and you know that there's a number of tenses, and you know that they're regular and irregular, so you've got a building for the regular, you've got a building for the irregular, and then you start patterning out a journey, ideally using the seashell method um, in the magnetic memory method, and then you just put out the variations for this or that verb. And by the time that you've done this with, let's say, five to 10 verbs, you'll have a good sense of it, and you won't need to really memorize it for more words. You'll just be like, is it regular or irregular? And you'll have a general sense. Will you make a couple mistakes here and there? Well, maybe, but uh, it won't really matter because you'll be able to proceed and you'll be able to ask the right questions. You'll, you, you'll develop a self-correcting mechanism. So Shubas, let me know if that answers your question and uh, take action with that because it's pretty simple. And uh, it's just a matter of showing up to the art of memory and getting it done. And uh, it's fun. So uh, any, any other questions? Uh, I really just wanted to establish that when you walk into a room, you could use the rule of threes if you wanted and uh, really just bang stuff down without thinking about it too much because you have a tool in your pocket and you just establish it there. 
uh, every ten, every time you walk into a room, you know, you just you're you're using space as it presents itself to you. You're really exploiting its the ability to naturally divide that space with a simple calculation, just looking at it like that, it's divided. There's other tricks and tips, um, lots of things. It doesn't have to be three. There's a way to walk into a room and instantly map on eight stations, instantly map on 10 stations. You can, you can do this. You don't have to think about it, it's just done. It's done before you arrive, but you practice and learn. So for more information about all that sort of stuff, Head on over anytime to magneticmerrymethod.com. If you're watching this after this live stream ends, which was going to be in a couple minutes here, just uh, leave a comment down below, get subscribed to this channel, and uh, hit those like buttons. Let Google know, let YouTube know, let the world know that you care about this kind of educational content. It's a sunny day out there in Brisbane. I'll show you before I go. If there are any last questions, now's the time. Look at that. Hello, hello. Beautiful, beautiful sky. It's so warm and beautiful. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm working on a new book. You're going to love it. This is the, the best book I've done ever. And uh, I'm going to head to the library for that. Turn the internet off. With great power comes great responsibility, as Spider-Man always said. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those who participated. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, what am I missing? What am I missing? I'm missing Ali from Liverpool. Oh, Dan's got a question here. I'm finding now very new room place I'm going thinking. Excellent, a new Mary Palace. Dan, that's awesome. Thank you for letting me know. And uh, thank you for everyone who was here. And Shuba says, thanks, Anthony. So I assume that that was a helpful and useful answer. And uh, I look forward to meeting you all in the very near future. Thank you for visiting magneticmemorymethod.com. If you haven't seen the latest podcast and post, uh, it's about Barbara Oakley's Mind Shift. Uh, Alan asks, what is the new book called? That is coming very soon. Uh, I'm not saying much about it, only to say that this is the ultimate memory improvement book. It's not called the ultimate memory improvement book. It's not even called the ultimate memory improvement secret, which by the way, since you're here, if you haven't taken the ultimate memory improvement secret, then uh, it's still available for free. Uh, I was only exclusively announcing it on the podcast, but uh, I thought before I take it down, mm, yeah, okay, so some YouTube people can have access to that too. I'm not sure exactly what day it will be taken down, but it'll probably be the end of this month. So go to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash secret. That's magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash secret. It's an audio program. It's about two and a half hours long and uh, it's going to be taken away and disappear. So you're gonna to wanna to be registered for it. If you are interested in it, don't bother if you're not interested in it. There's some homework to be completed and so forth. But uh, I think you'll find it useful if you are someone who really likes to try things, take action on things, to learn, to grow, to develop, to become smarter. Dan says, love the podcast with Florian, by the way. Dan, thanks for checking that out. I think you're gonna love the one with MindShift also, where I talk about MindShift. And you can read the material there as well if you're a scanner. But, uh, you know, the podcast versions are different than what is on the, on the, the screen. So, uh, reading and listening, I highly recommend. But Barbara Oakley wrote such an amazing book. So it's like a book report, but it's also me extracting my favorite parts from that book. So if you haven't heard that, go check out the MindShift book review, uh, book report, book assessment, and so forth. She was so kind to share it with her list. You know, if you haven't taken Learning How to Learn, and now there's a MindShift free MOOC as well, it, it's just amazing what she does. She's, she's such a, a caring and brilliant and smart and accomplished teacher. So you've got to get hooked up with that. And uh, she was so kind to share with, with her you know, more than a million people all about the, uh, the, 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 what I had to say about MindShift. And, uh, and it's really great. It's really, it's such a great book. So I would love for you to help me return the support to her support of me because it's, it's, it's great. So go and read that, listen to the podcast, click the like button, the share button, all that stuff. And uh, really help spread the word because she's doing such amazing things for the world. Learning how to learn is just an absolute amazing course. And you can learn how to learn at a better level even if you still are, even if you already know how to learn, go and take it anyway. Support this kind of stuff on the internet because, you know, with 
with all the things that are happening with fake news. Ellen says, she's such a great teacher, just like yourself, Anthony. Thank you for saying that, Ellen, I appreciate it. But we need to support each other. If you care about this kind of ed education, you need to be involved. You need to click those like buttons and you need to share it with people. And you know when you share, give a reason why. Take this because, or read this because. Uh, there's research that people are sharing stuff that they're not even consuming, right? Like they've done some pretty interesting things where they are uh, sharing and, uh, and, and they, like, they'll write in the text, absolute gobbledygook that nobody would, in their right mind would share. But people are actually clicking share buttons without consuming. So one of the ways that you can do this is actually read things or listen to podcasts and then share and then give a reason why you liked it. So we've been seeing that on this call. People have been making some comments and, and meaningful comments. So let's bring more meaning to the internet and share things that we've genuinely consumed. And if you're not a genuine consumer and you're not really interested, then just leave it alone because it's skewing the data. And what ends up happening is that the junk is rising to the top more than the good stuff. And that's because of this strange phenomenon where people are sharing and liking things that they haven't even really looked at. That's uh, hmm, not very healthy <laughs> in our culture. So thank you very much for everyone who's here, who was engaged. And thank you for checking out the new Mindshift uh, podcast and post that I put out there. Thanks for supporting Barbara Oakley's work. She's just fantastic. And uh, thank you for supporting my work. And thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And thank you, uh, I'm grateful, I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for the sun, I'm grateful for knowledge. And uh, Alan, sorry to dodge your questions about the title of the new book and what it's all about, but it's going to be announced as soon as possible. There's a lot of moving parts to it. And uh, in the meantime, a little bit of it, no, not really, but you, you can get the ultimate memory improvement secret, which uh, may or may not be somehow involved in this new book at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash secret that is disappearing soon, most likely this month. And so you're going to want to grab that before it disappears. That's magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash secret. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. And until we have a chance to speak again, you know how this ends. You've been you, I've been me. And until we speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye.